you guys? It's Nassim here. Now, before I start the video, I have one serious question. Is the PS5 better than the Xbox Series X? And this is a question that really had me thinking because the PS5 is an amazing console, it has next level games, it has next gen features, and it's an all around great console that gives me a lot of enjoyment. But if I'm being honest, I can say the exact same thing when it comes to my Xbox Series X, and believe it or not, both consoles are extremely enjoyable and offer many different things that many casual and heavy gamers will enjoy. And I know that there are a lot of you guys deciding whether or not you should buy the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, so hopefully this video can give you some good insight on which console is right for you. Now starting with the design of both consoles, the PS5 is the one that stands out much more with it having a very futuristic yet stylish look. The invert ice cream sandwich look is liked by many people, but it's not for everyone. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that Sony took some risks and didn't get too comfortable. I like the fact that the PS5 had two press buttons for the eject and power instead of the touch sensors because there was no lag whatsoever. I also really like the fact that the PS5 gave us options when it came to ports. Right here we have the USB-C and USB-A option. So whether you want to plug in your controller, newer phone, or computer, you have that option. Or if you want to plug in your older phone or any cable that supports USB-A, you also have that option too. Also, if you don't like the regular white plates that come with the console, you have different face plates that you can use if they get dirty or if you wanna spice things up. Sony made it even easier by making the plates easy to take off and install if you don't want any troubles. Now looking at the front, there's a stylish yet effective ventilation system along with the disc drive, but one of the main problems that I had with the front is that there's this glossy material in the middle and even though it looks nice when you first buy it, after a while, it gets a lot of random scratches that ruin the overall look of the console. Another problem that I had with the design on the PS5 was that it was much bigger than I thought, which resulted in me having to try my best to fit it in smaller places like my room or even my entertainment center. I wanted to have it stand up, but either it didn't look right or was just too big. So if you are considering getting a PS5, then you could get a matte covering to protect the glossy exterior, and you can also plan for a spacious spot where you're going to put your PS5. Now looking at the design on the Xbox Series X, the look is completely different from the PS5. It doesn't stand out, it doesn't have any special customizations, and it's an overall bland looking device. But that isn't particularly a bad thing. I really like the simplicity that came with the Xbox Series X. It made placing so much easier because the ventilation is at the top, so if you lay it flat or have it standing up, you'll be able to get good ventilation. Also, it wasn't too big, so I was able to fit it anywhere, whether it was my room or my living room. The Series X is also able to look much better for a longer period of time, since it has a matte material all around. As you can see, there's little to no scratches, it's easier to clean, and it gives off a very professional yet premium look. Continuing the simplicity, the Series X only has three different buttons, including the Xbox symbol power button, the eject button for this, and the controller button that connects your controller to your Xbox. The eject tray has a nice sleek look that matches the aesthetic, but something that bothered me was the fact that the Series X didn't have two ports like on the PS5, and most importantly, the fact that it didn't have a USB-C port. The fact that I couldn't charge multiple things at once, and then them not including the USB-C, gave me a very much more outdated feel. It didn't really scream next gen. But again, I love the discreet look that it offers, so if you are considering getting something that looks low key, the Series X fits that style, but if you're looking for a more flashy console that is more focused around customization, the PS5 will fit that style. Now moving on to the home screen of both consoles, I was a much bigger fan of the PS5 because unlike the Series X, Sony took a chance and completely changed the interface for a much more immersive experience. And as you can see here, whenever I scroll through different apps and games, the entire background changes to match that theme, but with the Xbox Series X, it's the exact same experience as the Xbox One, and there isn't much that changed, which resulted in it feeling much more outdated. Even when scrolling through the interface, the PS5 felt more immersive, smooth, and responsive, and the Series X felt more basic with good response times, but it didn't give me that same smooth feeling when going through apps. Now getting into quick menus, if you want to access your quick menu on your PS5, all you have to do is press the home button and a good amount of options come up, and I think that the quick menu represents the PS5 as a whole because it was pretty overwhelming when I first pulled it up. I didn't know what any of the symbols meant and I had to hover over them just to find out and get used to them. But when it came to the Series X, I already owned an Xbox so I knew exactly where everything was which made getting used to it much easier. I could scroll through each menu with the click of a button and everything was labeled so I liked it even more. Now one thing that I preferred when it came to the Xbox was that it was much more customizable. Like right here, you can see that I'm able to change the background and tiles to any color I want and even put any picture I want as the background. But with the PS5, it's already customized for you, and even though it does look nice, I like having the option to make the console truly feel like mine on the inside and out. Now this can be a good and bad thing for both consoles, because with the Xbox Series X, there are many people who like the simplicity and the fact that it kept the classic look, but with the PlayStation 5, it can be a bit too much. Like I remember when I first bought it and used the interface, 
there were so many options and extra steps just to do little tasks and that really overwhelmed me at times. So if you're someone who likes a nice simple interface that doesn't require much change, the Series X is for you. And if you want an interface that is very unique but will take some time getting used to, then the PS5 is for you. Now moving on to one of the most important aspects in gaming, that is the first step to an immersive experience, the DualSense and the Series X controller are both really good controllers that were comfortable and didn't really give me any problems. And even though both controllers are really good, I feel like the major differences between them came in the form of different features and look. Like when we look at the DualSense controller, it continues that futuristic aesthetic by matching the color schemes and bulkiness of the PS5. Its clear buttons have a good press and are very durable. It has a mic that you can hear out of and speak into with your friends. It has motion controls that is compatible with many adventurous games. It has the new adaptive triggers that increase resistance based on in-game situations. And it has a nice touchpad that not only allows you to slide your fingers across as if it's a laptop, but it's also a functional button that you can use in-game. Sony even put attention to detail by putting small logos on the body of the controller and still adding that signature light bar that tells you which account you're on. Now looking at the Xbox Series X controller, everything was pretty much the exact same as the Xbox One's controller, but there are some things that Microsoft tweaked to make the controller much more comfortable. On the front, there's the blacked out Xbox power button. We have the fresher looking D-pad along with the asymmetrical sticks, and we even have a better looking shape than last gen's version, which is really nice. And now the first thing that I liked about the controller was the fact that Microsoft changes the materials from a glossy slippery material to a much more durable plastic with added grip. Another thing that I enjoyed about the Series X controller was that it was a little bit smaller in comparison to the Xbox One's controller, and I definitely felt the difference. I was able to get a better grip, and the controller was overall much more comfortable. The new D-pad was okay, but if I'm being honest, it didn't really make that much of a difference for me when playing games, but I like how it looks. And even though I like both of these consoles, if I really had to choose, I would go with the DualSense because it offers many more features, a newer look, and overall just feels much more next gen. So if you're the type of gamer that feels like the newer features will give you an overall greater experience, then the PS5 is for you. But if you're one of those gamers who don't really care about the features and wants a more straightforward solid controller, then the Series X is for you. Now when it comes to games, both the Series X and the PS5 have a wide range of good exclusives, but in the end, they're all based on preference. I really love playing Spider-Man Miles Morales, but I also like playing Gears of War, so I had no choice but to get both. But if you are gonna pick a side, the PS5 exclusives include The Last of Us, Spider-Man, Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank, Gran Turismo, Demon's Souls, etc. And the Xbox Series X's exclusives include Gears of War, Forza, Halo, Sea of Thieves, Sunset Overdrive, and many more. Now again, I couldn't choose, but if you are someone who likes playing Spider-Man or Gears of War, then it'll be easier for you to choose. But if you aren't into exclusives and play cross games like Call of Duty, NBA 2K, or Fortnite, then all of the other factors that I talked about will play into your decision. Also, if you aren't someone who straight up buys games at 70 bucks a pop, you have the option to sign up for the PS5's PlayStation Plus, or you can get the Xbox Series X's Game Pass. And basically, both of these subscriptions allow you access to play hundreds of games via stream or download. So if you're on your PS5 or Xbox and don't have Spider-Man or Gears 5, you can play it without having to pay for it in full. And even though this idea is cool in retrospect, I think that both the PS Plus and Xbox's Game Pass are both really good, but in my opinion, Game Pass is the winner because it has much better games overall. Game Pass also lets you play EA games, Xbox 360 games, and the original Xbox games along with exclusives, so it's the clear winner in this category. And with PlayStation Plus, you have three different types of subscriptions where you can play PS3 games and newer titles, which is really cool. But all in all, it comes down to preference because both are really good. And both subscriptions will take you a mile longer, and if you're like me, you may be thinking, Man, $15 a month is a lot of money. But if you think about it, that totals up to $180 a year, which totals to three games if you were to buy them in full. So you're actually saving a great amount of money. Now, when it comes to noise, I would say that the Xbox Series X was a little bit quieter, but all in all, it didn't really make that much of a difference. Something that was interesting though was the fact that the PS5 had a much better improvement when compared to last gen, and I was very happy that it didn't sound like a jet engine. Now the final thing that I wanted to touch on when it came to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X was the graphics and load times. Now starting with the load times, I didn't really notice any difference, but the Xbox Series X had a new feature called Quick Resume. And Quick Resume is a feature where you can basically jump between games without having to save or close them. 
Like for example, I could switch between three different games and it will go to the exact point of where I left off, which means that I can play many different games without having to restart the app. And this is something that I will use frequently, changing games was very fast and really helped me decide when I couldn't decide on what games to play. Now, when it comes to graphics, both of these consoles are extremely identical. They both had really great resolutions that complemented games. They both had realistic shadows that added a depth of realism, and they both were really immersive and gave me so much enjoying when I was playing. So in these two categories, both the PS5 and Series X are tied. And if you want to get the ultimate immersive experience visually, then either one of these will satisfy your needs. So here's the final question. Which console is better, the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X? Well, if I'm being honest, the PS5 is better. And I say that the PS5 is better because when you look at both consoles as a whole, the PS5 had more features, more innovation, a better controller, and better customization. And even though I would say that the PS5 is a better console, I still really love the Series X because I had so much fun with it. But I do wish that Microsoft would have put in more effort and took it a little bit more seriously. And honestly, if it did, then the Series X would have been my favorite. But let me know down in the comments, which console would you get? Do you think the PS5 is better? Or do you think that the Xbox Series X is better? Let me know. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. It will be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.